Hello and welcome to D&D with High School Students presents The Medusas. Um, we left off in a very interesting place because a strange sequence of events occurred. And uh, for the recap, uh, Virginia, you recall um, what happened was very strange, but you and Bullstrong and uh, Arya did not necessarily see anything strange, but you, through your comrades, we're experiencing a very strange event, a rather cosmological, uh, exceptionally special event. And you remember, of course, when you uh, actually witnessed what was outside of the window, this amazing uh, universal galactic kind of color explosion and lights and, you know, this almost like acid trip northern lights <laughs> event right and mm -hmm. and yet interestingly enough so did vorsu now but no one else did except for you jenny who did see some strange kind of glimmering pulsing um gently glowing light but it was like far past like behind the moon almost and after some debate about what to do with this circumstance, Vorsu begged you for his freedom to fly to it, to, to go up into the beautiful lights. And you watched as he flew up there after falling out the window. And you watched as he flew up there, <laughs> and you guys watched him as far as your eyes could see until he was just a little speck in the sky, and then he disappeared, having flown up. And you know, after kind of going out and picking yourself up, the innkeeper was you know, effectively persuaded slash deceived into believing this ruckus had occurred and apologized. Um, and now you find yourself in the morning. Uh, knowing that you're going to need to clean yourselves up for that appointment that you have in the Citadel, uh, you call upon the services of the innkeeper who uh, has promised to heat up some water and draw baths in the backyard of the inn. Um, you guys, you know, bathe. There's like little like privacy curtains. So you like bathe. You guys get yourselves cleaned up. You are afforded a meal um, and you guys have breakfast. And then basically you have like about an hour, which is more than enough time to get to the Citadel. Um, so having, you know, gotten into your best clothes that aren't totally damaged from combat um, and cleaned yourselves up and done your various grooming. I don't know, Bullstrong, if there's something that you have to do during that process. Like do you smear pig poo on yourself or? Um, Bear's blood, is there some ritual that you uh, I like engage to, in? to fluff the beard. You fluff the beard. <laughs> yeah. You, f you get some like bacon grease from the kitchen oh. and like mm. massage it in to give it that glistening <laughs> feel of. I'm just thinking of the acne like a lot. Yes. Well, but you know what? You're used to that. So it's, it's part of the gig. No, but in all seriousness, you guys clean yourselves up and you make your way to the Citadel. Um, when you get to the gates to the Citadel District, you present the invitation, the missive that you were given. The guards look at it, and they look at you guys, and they look back at it, they look at you guys, and they're like, mm hmm, proceed. And another more elegantly dressed guard, who is wearing the garb and the insignia, uh, but not like armor, greets you once the gates open. And uh, he is, he's like, well, good morning. Please come with me to the palace we go. And he begins skipping to the palace. He doesn't. He just walks normally. Um, you guys follow him. You go to the palace. There are more guards outside. And this time, actually, um, as you get towards the palace, you see walking, not on horseback, but like walking in their fine armor, are a few of the actual Mukadas Jengchalar, who are the dragonborn. And they, they um, I don't know if they would recognize you. Maybe they do. Yeah, they... They're like walking by and they don't seem to notice you guys, but they, they go in and you guys are kind of going into this group and you see a few other people from like around the Citadel kind of headed in the same direction. Some of them seem to be in different forms of finery, like like nobles. A uh, few other have like government insignias that, that obviously dictate that they're somehow employed in the theocracy, um, clerical robes. Um, Particularly of note, those of you with religion, without even making a roll, would notice that those who are in the clerical garb tend to have uh, the symbol of Vusake, the water goddess. Um, so you guys make your way through, and um, you are led to an interior courtyard. 
and there are servants bringing like food and things around and you notice a huge banquet table and it's a beautiful layout there's like water gardens and beautiful like landscaping and hanging baskets with flowers and there's like a group of like three or four musical performers playing like harp like just gentle like soothing music and like um, like there's like a monk who's like tending to one of the water gardens and you see he has like one of the robes of Rousseik and so you're you're kind of like gathering this in and it seems to be almost like a little social moment before the the meetings and the banquet begins and a, a few minutes after that you kind of you know as you're kind of milling about you notice that a few other people seem to come in sort of towards the at the last minute uh, one of whom is a dwarven uh, well-dressed well-groomed olden dwarven uh, older dwarven male who is wearing immaculate full plate mail armor obviously custom made um, bearing the insignia of Kabul Kailish and Poitex Jahar he has a battle axe slung over his shoulder and you notice he walks in and seems to like nod to a few people and um, goes over and like helps himself to some like some like meat like just a leg of mutton um, and then a few other people in robes and then kind of just as these people are coming in you get this sense that like things are starting to wrap up when the musicians stop playing and a moment later somebody rings a chime and it's like ding, 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 ding. and everybody stands up and like uh, they, everybody kind of like looks towards this doorway at the palace and then a man steps out and he's like his holiness Kor Pai Kamba and like everybody like bows their heads and you see the most charismatic and immaculate looking dragonborn that you have ever seen he is he is just clearly a regal person to do first of all he is a foot taller than any dragonborn you've ever seen he's seven feet tall and he is just like robed in like this amazing like white and blue like finery like silk blouse kind of shirt and he has like gold like literally gold bracers and like a gold necklace and like his his like even like the the way that his his skin his scales are like immaculate and like polished almost blinding and he comes down he steps down and he nods and everyone he gestures at the table and everyone seems to sit down so you guys kind of sit down and you're not like at the head of the table right next to him you're like you know kind of t kind of down behind the cheap seats you're like you know maybe 10 people deep from him but it's a it's a huge table there's like 20 people sitting at this table so everybody sits and then he like goes up to the head of the table which has like a much larger chair and two servants like pull it out and he sits down and scoots in and he looks around and he nods and then there's another chime and servants start bringing food and then it kind of becomes a social thing again so seated more closer to his holiness than you guys you notice the dwarven armored soldier looking person um, is clearly closer you also notice that there are a few um, what you could probably guess as like advisors because they're wearing they, they obviously have like the insignias of the capital city of Poitex Shahar but they also have like robes on of different colors and there are a couple who are human there's uh, an older woman who's a halfling and they're all kind of wearing the same robes then you see definitely a few members of the bureaucracy like within the theocracy <coughs> who appear to be clerics bearing like the symbol of Wusaik. so those kind of fancy people are kind of closer to his holiness than you guys are and then like further down the table from you guys are kind of a mishmash of different people there's there's a few humans uh, a few other dragonborn uh, some halflings and a couple gnomes uh, what you notice seems to be absent from this table uh, are elves you do not see any elves in fact as you look around you are literally Magnus the only elf at the table I don't like that um, now make an insight check uh oh uh oh you're gonna find out that they're heavily are racist. they racist <laughs> oh god if they're racist I'm gonna cry 
<laughs> That's not good. That's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem any you know, like you don't feel like anybody's like you know staring you down or intimidating you. Okay. Uh, they seem to be just like in casual crosstalk. Um, and at a certain point, you guys notice that there is one empty seat, Ooh. and it is literally to the left of His Holiness, like just at the end where His Holiness would be sitting. There's one seat that's empty. Um, so after about 20 minutes of some food and drinks being served, people are eating, people are talking, um, His Holiness looks across the table and he like gestures with a finger. And uh, one of the lead servants like steps up and he's like, His Holiness Kor Pagambar will speak now. And everybody immediately goes silent. He looks around the room at you, at, 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 at the table at you guys and he looks to the other advisors and he says, some rather disturbing news was revealed to us within the last few days. And I have invited some fine citizens who witnessed some of these events on the road while in the caravan with the Jeng Chilar to speak of what they witnessed and to share their insights. I acknowledge Arya of the Northern Goliath Bone Tribe. I, don't, I forgot your tribe name. The Bone Tribe sounded pretty <laughs> dope, though, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. The Northern Goliath Bone, bone Thugs. Tribe. The Bone <laughs> Thugs. No. So he, he acknowledges you. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge Capella, who also was there to travel with the princess and the Jangchilar, and it was Ariane Capella who first informed our very honored Captain Aki, who could not be here today, to alert him, uh, us of a group of imposters who had been traveling around Kabul Kailash committing horrible acts in the name of the Jangchilar a sin which will not quickly be forgotten. Speak first of this, and then I would invite all of your friends, as well as you, to tell us here in the council of what followed in the caravan train with the princess and the disturbing attacks that occurred. But speak first of the imposters. <clears throat> yes. Um... Uh, me and Aria, we travel often, and in one of our travels, we had come across in multiple towns, first much closer to our hometown, a little bit closer to Togotagi. There was a slaughter that seemed to come across the roads and we had noticed that it had been someone of a paladin folk, some heavy war horses, and following their trail, we had met these men. They were more human. <clears throat> At this, you were interrupted by a gruff clearing of the throat from the armored dwarf. He's like, <clears throat> may I ask what manner of victims did you encounter in this slaughter that you witnessed? Were they peasant folk, merchants, travelers? They seemed to be mostly peasants, but they were traveling, the servants of someone greater. They had the insignia of the... Some mages of the Mantiro. Yes. Magic users. At this comment, without making an insight roll, you notice considerable, considerable eyebrows being raised. Like, they're like, and then you notice a few people like, subtle whisper. Yeah. The dwarf nods at both of you in, in answering his question. And of course, this was troubling, but as we came closer, we also noticed there was 
no fight between it and not really much taken at all, so of course it wouldn't be a thief tribe or anything. They would have taken much more. They had other valuables with them that were just left to strew. And as we tracked down these heavy horse footprints, we came across these people we assume to be the actual Chang Shalar only because we knew no better. Well, and first we came across a village that had been completely ransacked and people were killed and slaughtered, and the only survivor was one child, or it was two children. And so we rescued them and secured their safety in a neighboring village. And then we came across a crossroads camp of these people. And it was there that we had met with them again, and of course they behaved not like a proper soldier, especially a holy one. They behaved with drinking and gambling, something they were telling us about how they had been in search of some kind of magical stone. They had said they obtained- Eyebrows. Murmur. <laughs> <laughs> and then at that point, you notice uh, one of the one of the robed humans sitting closer to his holiness, like does a like a murmur, and then he looks up and he's like, eh, "Excuse me, as a point of clarification, I must ask: Did they refer to this as a magical stone, per se?" Uh, or did they perhaps refer to it as a, a gem or a, a crystal, perhaps? Yes, as the men described it, they had said, because they were no longer in possession of it when we had met with them, but they described it as a sort of green-colored orb. Murmur, like the 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 arcane looking dude is like, hmm, I see. Green stone. Continue, carry on. Pardon the interruption. And of course, we assumed, since this was so important, that that must have been what they what they killed all those people along their tracks were for. But of course, at the time, and they had it no longer in their procession. They said they had been contracted a great deal, which is why they were celebrating, and sold it to a man with curly, dark hair and very ornately <coughs> dressed. That, that comment doesn't seem to elicit like murmurs. It's just more like people are like pondering what you're saying. And then His Holiness himself speaks up, and he's like, and is, was that the conclusion of your encounters with these imposters? It was pretty much. We had left um, thinking that it might have been like who they said they were, but when we were further down on the road um, after an attack from an ogre, or a troll, an attack from a troll, um, we ran into Captain Aki and your men, and they told us that they were the actual knights, and then we informed them immediately of the people who had been deceiving us. Many people nod, looking around. You notice one of the clerical-looking advisors wearing the, the colors of Vusaic and the symbol um, leans forward and is like, uh, may I ask a further question of clarification. Are you certain about these imposters referring to the magical stone or whatever they said as being green? Are you certain of the color? Are we? <laughs> yes, I, I am almost certain. I know okay. well, I that the one they had described, they said it was uh, a little larger, almost I, almost the size of an apple, and that it was in the tone of green. Mm. And did they speak uh, 
any further of their employer, this person you have described? Did they indicate from where he came or uh, a name or anything else? No, nothing of the sort. All that they had known was after they were paid, he had went off into a carriage and no further contact with them. They really did not want to give up any information that they had. We kind of had to um, use alternative methods and wait until the, they were very inebriated to get any kind of information out of them. They seemed very secretive about the entire thing, except very ostentatious about their celebration and their name, naming of themselves. You, you notice that like two, two of the clerical people and one of the arcane people are like, basically like have quills and ink and they're kind of taking notes. And then uh, at a certain point after kind of completing the description of the narrative, His Holiness nods. There's like a 30 second pause of silence. Nobody says anything. He kind of nods and thinks about it. And then, Very well then. Let us speak then of the caravan from Kadimki Kala to back to the capital and what you and your friends have encountered. I recognize Amdi, I recognize Magnus, and I recognize Bolstrom. Now, share with the council as you were proceeding back with the caravan and of the Jang Shilar and the princess Speak of what each of you remember or recall about the, the strange night and the occurrences thereof. Um, well, the first thing that I remember is that we had been traveling with your men and we had set up camp for the night. Yes. And we had um, put our stuff down and we had gone to supper. And when we came back, our stuff had been rummaged through, and we immediately brought this to the attention of Captain Aki. Not that we would distrust your men, but he promised that he would figure out what was going on, and when we got back, all of our stuff was put back in the right place again. And then that night, we had stayed up on a bit of a watch. We were a little untrusting about the events. And then um, in the middle of the night, something had come into our tent and attempted to take one of our possessions and um, we chased it out. Yes, on further, once we caught up to it and it had taken an object of mine and uh, tried to fly into the sky and it was some kind of strange little red demon creature, like a baby. Eyebrows. Like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> and then, you notice like after a few murmurs and stuff, uh, you notice one of the arcane robed advisors, uh, the same one that had asked the question earlier is like, as a point of clarification, um, would these have been any of the uh, Kazil Iblis. I don't know huh? what that is. <laughs> I just and you see huh? other people nod and they're like, oh, yes, that's good. That's good. He's like, yes, it is quite possible. Anybody who wants to make an arcana roll, you can. Okay. 18. Wow, I'm horrible. 12. 14. So uh, those six. who had a 15 or higher would know that there's an obscure race of basically red demon babies who are mischievous um, and actually this is this could also technically be a religion role if you have a higher religion um, but if you made the role yeah. you could know <laughs> that um, these are, are, are a very magical based race um, and that they are typically like more mischievous than anything else um, and not known to be like raids and attacks and killing 
uh, but more like mischievous. Mm -hmm. But they're also kind of like very rare. Yeah, that was what we had encountered, and we had encountered it in the past before. Um, while at the Earth Temple in Togatagi, we had run into some, and we thought that that was just a one off case of them. At, at the mention of this narrative, yeah. there, like, there are several <laughs> murmurs. They're like, murmur, murmur, I'm just like temple. spouting I'm like, everything I know. One, like, one of the clerics <laughs> is like, I'm guy. sorry, did you say that you encountered Kizil Iblis at the, at the temple to Ayuk, the small shrine in Togitagi? Yes. How is it that this is the first time we have heard of it? Well, it's preposterous. <laughs> Like, and people seem to be, like, genuinely shook by this oh. revelation. My bad. <laughs> yeah, on a small other exhibition before, we had ventured into their burial chambers. They had said there was some rises there and where the monks were being buried. And when we ventured down, not only were some of them rising from the dead, they had skeletons coming back. This is the first time we're telling this story out loud. And like, th this round of murmur has clearly like bothered His Holiness because like he tolerates it for five <laughs> seconds and he's like, enough! And like, everybody's done talking. Please continue. Okay. But, while we cleared those out, that was when, at the end, next to another strange, ornate statue with another large one of those, orb. a large crystal-like green sort of orb, was where we found a more fresh corpse that had exploded into the, the weird demon things. But, um, but we quickly took care of them. Subtle murmurs because they're afraid of His Holiness calling them. So they're like, and like furious writing of notes. As a point of clarification, <laughs> allow me to ask one more follow-up question. The, the initial encounter, you say, uh, this corpse exploded into Kaisel Iblis. And, yes. And it was at this time that you discovered the other crystal, you say? Well, the orb was part of uh, the statue. It was holding it. And, yes, um, yes. The statue of St. Martius in the crypts of the Temple of Ayuk uh, is a holy place, and there is a uh, decently sized... Uh, orb there with the statue, but you're saying that you discovered another orb there? Wait. The red one. I didn't say that. Um, okay, no, you're not you saying didn't. it. No, we didn't say it, but... Roll insight. I'm giving her the eyeballs. <laughs> like, are we, are we dogging around? I would let you guys roll this, but you weren't there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can both roll insight. Oh, okay. <laughs> You know, that's a nine. I mean, like, if you're um, at the table, then I were there. Insight? 21. Nine. Okay, you're, you're like, yeah, you're thinking to yourself, and you're like thinking about what to answer. And at this point, you notice, you make a connection. Uh -huh. Capella didn't say anything about finding the other stone there when the body exploded. And the wizard who is speaking and asking these follow-up questions consistently mm -hmm. is like staring intently at at her and like you just notice oh, it's kind okay. of strange that you would have asked about something that she didn't reveal with okay. such specificity uh -huh. as if he knew about it uh, i say uh i'm sorry uh, we never said that we found something like that we only said the one which is true. You don't have to make a deception. Yeah, I'm, He's like, I'm, oh, I'm intently staring at this My man. apologies. I must have misunderstood then. Well, carry on. And of course, the one we had left there, we were only there to take care of their dead problem. And this problem with the demons. And after we had just left and 
that was much long ago, much before we had... That was before coming. the village, before yes. we had left for the village. But uh, I digress on that. Back to the night with the Jiang Shalar, that was when not only did we see these smaller ones, but of course we, we took care of it being the party of adventurers, but after we did, we had encounters with much larger ones. There were a few, the large ones with the full sprouted wings, they almost seemed, a couple of them were a little older. <laughs> Additionally, as a side note, just a question. Um, I, I saw something, it, I don't think it was one of these, but I could be wrong, that cast a, a very great shadow upon the ground. I was the only one that saw it. But it was of, I, I'm not <laughs> sure. Magnus needs somebody to tell him that he's right. <laughs> Conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> I'm like, more furious, note taking. I'm like, the clerics are turning to each other. No, do we the high wizard the like, whispers over to one of the other wizards and they're like taking notes and like murmuring. And once again, his holiness seems to like be Dude. holding in his wrath and anger. And you kind of like feel like he's unhappy about, not you, but like all the hubbubbery. And then he's like, Hubbubbery. he's like, <laughs> he looks over to the dwarf and the dwarf looks at him and the dwarf slams his gauntlet down on the table and everybody shuts up. Thank you, General. Mm. Please, Magnus, continue. You saw a great shadow cast at yes. night. Um, I was I was curious as to if anyone here might know anything about that because I did some research and I couldn't find much on it, and um, I wanted to bring that up since that happened around the same time. We visit. must, of course, discuss this. Bullstrong, you being from the north and the mountains have probably encountered strange things that we perhaps here in the capital have not. What make you of the encounter at night that your group endured? So I'm sitting there after they killed a bunch of them, Kyle, Isaiah, demon baby things, and we killed them, and I was going to take its head, and then it kind of exploded like everywhere, and it mm. hurt a lot. And was this explosion similar, in fact, to what you encountered earlier? Yes, indeed. A great burst of fire everywhere. Hmm. Magnus, were you able to see what cast such a great shadow? Um, not quite, and after doing some research on it, I really couldn't find much on it, and considering no one else saw it, they couldn't give me much on it either. It was just a great flying creature that didn't. But you have described that you encountered and fought larger winged creatures creatures, were they of the same build or appearance as the Kazil Iblis? Well... It is not known, he looks for a brief moment to the wizard, and the wizard's like, like shakes his head. I'm and, just staring then, at the wizard the whole time after and, he and said that comment. And his looks <laughs> back at you guys and he's like, it is not known for the Kizil Iblis to grow any larger than the small infant size that you have described. So I find it curious that, and as well, please do not think that I am questioning your account as the Jeng Shalar and Captain Aki also reported these winged terrible creatures that were in fact larger, but I am trying to decipher, and we as the council are trying to decipher if these are in some way related to the Kizil Iblis, or if they are different. They seem to be the same. I mean, I don't know much about these creatures, but it was of similar color and at the same time almost, but the ability is even, it had these telekinetic abilities, something maybe magic or of the mind, I'm not <laughs> quite sure. <laughs> but it was able to stun my friend here, paralyze him with just 
its ability, and I... And wh excuse me, uh, my apologies, Your this Holiness. Is the wizard? Um, yes, the wizard. I'm he's like, but staring just at as him. a point of clarification, he's guy. like, is it... Uh, were any of you able to identify if this was the use of arcane magic, perhaps, uh, by these primitive bestial creatures? Can I roll for He looks to you. <laughs> he, he, like, specifically yeah. looks over at Amity, and he's like, well, speak, man. Well... I want to know well. why I've been attacked multiple times in this here capital. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Isn't it your duty to uh, protect us since we're so special no, no, to you? No. Um, he doesn't mean that. No, I mean what, that. What he's, what he's trying the to say... The High Wizard is like, really? <laughs> What is do tell? What sort of attacks have you uh, endured here in the capital? He's just oh. trying to say that Subtle. he's very upset about um, all of, all of the attacks and, and the small demon creatures that have been running about. It's it's caused him very much stress, and we feel very sorry for you, Amity. And yeah. Hang that's an in excellent there. Uh, explanation. Now Magnus will make a deception. <laughs> <laughs> a significant oh. deception. Oh, oh come God. on. <laughs> Oh God, no! <laughs> okay, well that's thirteen. No, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. No, no, no. That's oh. in the hole. Okay, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Those they, are two of the like lowest dice dismiss rolls. Dismiss him. Uh, my apologies, Holiness, but I do feel like it is very pertinent that we discern the nature of these apparent abilities, of these apparently different Kizil Iblis. They are larger, no doubt, as your Jang Chalar uh, testified, uh, but the Jang Chalar did not mention anything about these magical abilities that this group is clearly referring to. So I again uh, ask, to what degree do you think these larger winged creatures were using arcane magic or rather just some inborn ability that we are not yet able to identify. I can only assume we had, I know not if Captain Aki has included this in his report, but when they had caught one, we took the opportunity to communicate with it. That being that I friend here was able to use some of the uh, magic in his abilities to communicate with him through the mind and it was that that we learned that they were something relating to the goddess deep the god, god. deepa i'm sorry uh the god deepa <laughs> murmur 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 <laughs> furious note taking cross whispering it had a very basic understanding a primitive mind of a primitive creature yes but it did say only to clarify that it had a thirst for oil and that it was sent here to retrieve something and now that it had got what it needed, it would return to the mouth of Deepa, wherever that may be. Whisper, cross whisper notes, like one of the asso associate <clears throat> wizards like pulls out a massive book and starts like <laughs> flipping pages and he's like, yeah. and they're like, they're all like, <laughs> His Holiness like nods and he's like, let us take a moment for the council to review these things and perhaps connect some truth to, or, or rather knowledge to these things that you have spoken of. So everybody nods and then people like start eating and drinking kind of in silence. While like other people are like looking through books and like yes I think it might be but uh, no that's not possible there's no history of that and there's like just banter about various lore and some of the clerics are like blah, deepa blah 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 deepa blah and they're they're like talking about different things I'm and like... about five minutes later um, His Holiness is like we will now speak I High Wizard please uh, what have you come across regarding these revelations? And once again, the, the human wizard is like, Your Holiness, uh, we have 
no luck in determining the nature of these creatures, nor do we have any lore related to uh, the possibility that somehow a Kizil Iblis could be uh, enlarged or evolved in the manner in which these folk have described, uh, not to doubt the veracity of their statements and assertions, but simply to say that we have uh, no means of uh, gathering any further knowledge. This will require a great deal of investigation, Your Majesty. We will need to go through the archives uh, to see if there is some record uh, within uh, older uh, knowledge that perhaps uh, has not been referred to in more recent volumes. And he gestures to like the big book. Well, His we had- His nods, he's like, mm. We had gone through the libraries <clears throat> here. Obviously when we came to rest here, we um, made sure that we were doing as much research as we could to try to figure out the nature of this and we, could not find anything, but the most that we could find out was first-hand account on the, due to our friend Amity here and his uh, abilities to communicate with this creature, and um, he told us some things, if you'd like to share what oh, the kind of stuff. All heads, literally, yeah. they're like <laughs> whip pan to you. And I just like, I'm like, Oh yes, um, so what I think I remember, Your Holiness, is that um, I've been uh, <laughs> I'll phrase it correctly. That his name was Force. You interrogated one of these creatures that was captured. Yes. yes. And you were, even though it was not speaking, you were able to communicate with it through your magical abilities. Well, I wouldn't say. And it's... what did it reveal to you? What were you able to ascertain? It revealed, first off, that it's like, to me, this is more important, but that it's like a full-fledged demon, and he always questioned why I'm different than him. But also, <laughs> of how, because we grew and like as we get to know more about each other, we understood um, different things about them. Did it have a name? Uh, Why well, yes, he told me on the first day, I think, uh, Borsu. <laughs> Borsu? <laughs> think he was cute. Like, <laughs> His name's Keith. Whispering, <laughs> note-taking, murmurs. Carry on. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Did this creature identify itself as somehow one of the Kazil Iblis to you? Actually, we encountered um, when Magnus lost the orb. Um, <laughs> I'm a little tipsy. Like, oh my on the god. <laughs> <laughs> All of you make inside checks. Oh no. <laughs> you and me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Ten. That's um. Mm -hmm. 20. 16. But not natural. Everybody over a 15. You seem to notice that like everybody's attention is totally fixed on Amity, but not in like an angry way or a suspicious way, but just like a, I thought that I it would be like if somebody sure. was explaining to you how like rocket science works. <laughs> like you could see that most of the people are like listening, they're like kind of like curiosity, but confusion a little bit, except for those of you who had over a 15. The high the wizard. wizard. Oh, I hate I'm that like guy. He seems to be like very like, like you were telling him how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He's oh, like, all right. So his holiness is like, yes, carry on. Oh, and then Magnus described to us a creature, but it's the same as Vorsu. So it was like a bigger demon, but not one of those you called them, whatever with your. You mean. He 
people. What you saw that created the great shadow. No, it's smaller than that. It was like what our paralyzed companion Magnus. we had. Yeah. So the great shadow was. I, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I did research on flying creatures and dragons, and mythological creatures, and I couldn't find anything on that. But these were. Um, so when I was paralyzed, there were two of them, and they didn't. They they did knock me unconscious, but only to get what I was holding, and um, they they paralyzed me. And so these are the the demon creatures that we were referring to before. You notice that as this discussion has been happening, and as Amity was describing this, the the like sages were looking through multiple books, and like after you finish your description, they're like. They didn't finish me off though, so. And and <laughs> still here. Guys. Once again, the high wizard is like like talking to them and they're looking through the books and like um and you notice his holiness is like is it possible in your opinion having been the only person to communicate with this creature that it is of a different race than from the kaizil ibis uh why well, yes actually we have um all, all of us experienced communication with him, but once he got, like, bigger. Murder! <laughs> <laughs> bigger! What? Bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, yeah, we got what, bigger over time. His holiness is like, what do you mean by bigger? Well, we fed him oil and he grew up like a uh, Physically, <laughs> mentally stronger, like, just, like, empowered himself over time with, like, black water. Furious note taking, more <laughs> looking through pictures. Is it possible that this creature who identified itself to you as, what did you say? Vorsu. Vorsu. Could that be the name of its kind rather than just a proper name? Possibly. At this, the High Wizard is like, ah, your holiness, as a point of clarification, we have not been able to find any evidence of any creature called a Vorsu in any of the traditional linguistic spellings. Uh, and furthermore, and he like is paging through, he's like, we uh, have been struggling to find a, a, uh, any sort of creature, mythical um, or magical, which matches such a description, your majesty. We will need to do further evidence uh, and research and investigation in the tower uh, library to determine any uh, any more uh, factual and uh, beneficial information related to this topic. Can He's I make like, an insight he, check to see if this guy really doesn't know anything about these you things? You can. Anybody can. Okay. You can, I'll, I'll I'll count your guy. insight check as a <laughs> general guy. table this guy. check. Mm, 9. 20, not natural. 20, not natural. Okay. So, you guys know, like, he seems to be telling the truth in the same, like, uh, like a way that he was before. Uh, but you notice that like your insight check does reveal that like his holiness clearly seems annoyed by now. Like he's like, oh, very well. Sir High Wizard, you seem to be, um, <laughs> Sir High Wizard, Sir High Wizard man. <laughs> you seem to be quite knowledgeable about what we have said so far. Um, might I ask how you might have obtained such knowledge or? <gasps> He, you notice he seems like personally affronted by even you <laughs> asking that question. By you not even and you notice there are like, wizard. You know how people do the wave at like a sports event? There's a wave of murmurs. It's like. <laughs> I do not mean to offend. All the way around the table. It's too late. And then you qualify it with the, I mean, I do not mean to offend. And he's like, I have the title of high wizard for a very distinct reason, my young elven friend. And you oh. notice that, uh, oh. you notice that he looks to his holiness oh, no. and his holiness is like, let us allow Amity to continue uh, to finish his narrative. And then I believe it would be wise to take a short break. And I'm like, people nod in agreement. Amity, please speak of this creature in the course of the time that you have known it, you say that it grew yes. mentally, physically. What 
what has the end result been? And where do you keep this creature now? Um, we'll get to there. But we'll get to so there. how he got bigger, I guess he, um, with age, like they age a little bit faster, I believe. And I should assume so. Given your description, it's been less than a full week since you have returned, and you say that you have noticed considerable growth. Uh, he managed to accidentally ruin a little bit of the furniture where we were staying at. But he, he looks to Bullstrong, and he's like, Bullstrong. Would you say that this creature, this Vorsu, is your size? Just a uh, meta moment. It's like when he was leaving, he was about double your size. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Um, I was trying to hold on to him as he escaped, but because I couldn't, I just quickly Aww. end his life. Well played, DJ. You know what I'm yeah. gonna do? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Inspiration? For clutch, deception, and, and role playing, I will grant you inspiration for this yeah. role. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, how would you describe it? I don't want to ruin this moment. Um, inspiration is when you do something as like a player that's really outside the box or you're really getting into character and it's. Um, kind of clutch gameplay moves, and basically you get an extra, I think, is it a d10? So Depending there's on bardic it. inspiration, and then there's inspiration in the book where you get to add an extra die. Oh, okay. I'm going to say for this inspiration, since it involves social, which isn't necessarily Bullstrong's <clears throat> strong suit, I'm going to let you roll with advantage. So you're going to roll oh. deception with advantage and take the higher of the results. So okay. roll twice, take the higher of the results. Um, Never mind. Can I make a call before he rolls? Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna. All right, we're gonna go with eleven. Okay. Oh, yeah. I used to get inspiration from giving my DM Oreos. <laughs> I mean, some people roll like that. I don't. All right. Yeah. So you say this. That's pretty believable. Um, about half the table like nods, and the other half is like, "Wait, did he just say?" You had to kill it? Murmur, murmur, murmur. And like a few people are like, uh, did you say you slayed it? You, it? It was escaping and you had to kill it? Where is it now? Where's the body? Blah, blah, blah. And like there's just a cut, like murmur, murmur, talking and like many questions just being peppered at you. So I reach for a drinking horn yeah. and I spike my drink yes. first. Yes. And I swirl it and then I say, I killed it like a sheep. And then I drink. Oh! Oh! All right, you're making that roll again. I'm going to give you one more roll, but no advantage. Wait, before you roll. Now, the first time I wouldn't let you give him guidance. I was going to say, because am I sitting next to him? No, but yeah, close yeah. enough where close you enough. could. But the first time he did it in character, in game, so fast, there's no way oh, that, yeah. that was coming. Yeah. However, I okay. will say that knowing it, this, okay. this follow-up is coming and the fact that he it, brokered it a little extra time, yeah. I will let you throw him a guidance. Okay, so I'll throw you a guidance. So you get an extra D40 roll. So right. you can you can roll your D20, just regular, no advantage, and then you can add a D4. Okay. <laughs> Bless Bless you. You. That's going to be 14. <laughs> 14. Okay. People are like, I slayed this beast. His holiness is like, hmm. he looks to you and he's like, was this creature an imminent threat to the capital? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Okay, you're, you're speaking your character's truth, so I'm not going to make you make a deception roll. Yeah. You believe that it was not an imminent threat. He nods. Because Seems to be... You get the sense that his holiness seems to be satisfied. The wizard. <laughs> oh, no. On the other hand. I keep staring at this guy the whole time. The high wizard is like. Him. He's like. Your 
holiness, I hate to be a stickler, uh, <laughs> but uh, I must ask then, it would be extremely valuable for us in the tower to be able to uh, study this creature. Uh, it would have been much more valuable, living of course, but even to study the corpse, the opportunity to study, to, to study its uh, uh, anatomy and its, its, its the, the makeup of this creature could be extremely valuable. So I must ask, um, could you please uh, bring the corpse of this creature uh, to the citadel so that we may study it. So I have a pretty large skull collection. I love to play skull music. I can actually play some now if you'd like. But if that's not necessary, I will say I tried to take the skull of the creature and it exploded in my face. <laughs> Are you gonna do it again? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm Kim Wan. You hear the setup and you're like, yeah, do that. You got Everybody. this, bud. It's better. Ooh. That is a 20. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. People are like, ah, oh, like, hmm, disappointing. Darn. Oh, what a that travesty. does mean that it's related to the little thingies. So, um, Kor Pygambar says, he, he's like, hmm. So, sometimes they explode upon death, which... Upon beheading. Sounds oh, as if beheading. they are similar or somehow perhaps related to the Kaiser Lives. Uh, Hi, Wizard, what thoughts do you have on this matter? Anyone who wants to can make an insight check. Hi, Wizard, can I investigate this guy or something? <laughs> good. Okay. 11. Oh, wow, that was horrible. Not natural 20. Ten. But still a 20? Eight. Yes. Hmm, 16. All the rest of you don't seem to notice the High Wizard acting any differently. He's like, well, your holiness, it is unfortunate. As I mentioned before, it would be, or would have been very beneficial had we been able to study the corpse. But yes, perhaps your holiness, you are right. This, this could, this exploding corpse could somehow prove that there is a link between the Kiziliblis and these new evolved versions that uh, this group has described. Of course, I will, ask you to give us some time in the tower to do further research, uh, which we will certainly make a priority on your behalf, Your Holiness. And everybody's like, yes. And everybody's nods, and they're like, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You're like, um. I don't trust this guy. You feel, you feel like he's not being entirely truthful about his his reaction. There's something in how he reacted to this that seems too humble and too calm like about it. Um, like as if it's like when you're like when your teachers or parents are like tell you to just do something and you're like, yeah, sure, no problem. And you're like, I hate you. I'm gonna kill you. Like in your head. <laughs> like he kind of has that. He's like like seems very calm about it and is just like, yes, we'll research it further. But you could see that like he is suppressing something that is clearly not happiness. Um, hmm. And after this, uh, the, His Holiness nods. He's like, "Yes, this will, this will be important." I would like to thank our guests for sharing what they have learned, and we shall be more vigilant around the capital, but additionally around uh, as much of Kabul Kailash as we can. Though there have been other threats as of late uh, throughout the countryside, and still the news of these imposter soldiers is troubling as well. I would like to note that if you guys really want to kill these things, they seem to be weakened by both ice magic and hammers thrown directly into the face at close range. No, it's no, it's <laughs> Yes, uh, Your Majesty, thank you, sire. We will take this into account in our investigations and research, certainly. Uh, Korpai Gombar stands, everybody else stands. He nods, and then he turns. The servants like carry his robe, and he goes back into the building, they close the doors. And then after the doors close, everybody kind of steps away from the table and disperse. People start leaving, and you guys are there. 
one of the valets is like, thank you again for coming. Um, please, on behalf of His Holiness, take one of the gift bags on your way out. Gift bags. Oh my God, I hope it has soap. And you are uh, most appreciated for sharing and this council meeting. Thank you. Thank and you. He Kurt. gestures towards like the gate, but not in a like get out way, but like yeah. take your time, but like, you know, everybody starts leaving basically. So okay. I pull them all to the side. Are we like, we're off in a Let's little spot. And I say, I don't trust that guy. He looks angry. He looks like he's hiding something. I've been staring at him this whole time. Did you hear when she told about when we were down in the dungeon, we did find another orb. That's the one that they stole from us. We didn't say it out loud, didn't we? We didn't say that out loud. And he asked her about it. See, I was ready to share everything that y'all were, that everything that happened, but then y'all were holding back. After he, so after he asked her about the little orb without us ever actually saying anything, the last thing I want to do is say that we had it. Plus, did I overstep? By questioning him, was no. that a bad decision? <laughs> because I'm feeling like it might have been a bad decision. Um, but I'd like to question him further. I don't trust him. Well, Zayd, I know you may not up be up to date on your court etiquette, but <coughs> that may be why there were so many murmurs. Because obviously, you do know what a high wizard is. But he's shady. I know that. <laughs> he looked too calm as we were explaining all these things that made everyone else on the council freak. As you guys freak. are like in your own little murmur circle in the corner of like the courtyard, <laughs> and there's like gardens and stuff. You see most of the other people have left. You notice the dwarf is like finishing up like an entire turkey leg and he like stands up and like wipes his hands on the table. Puts his gauntlets back on and he's walking out. And as he walks out, he looks at Bullstrong and he's like, good job. And then he keeps walking. He's <laughs> like, yeah. Um, oh, so you guys kind of, you, you, have the, a few moments and then you notice like the servers are literally like coming and clearing the tables and they're like giving you the stink eye because you're you're like those people who won't leave and they're like uh-uh yeah um but you do notice that there is a table and there are actual like cloth bags that are very nice like velvet cloth bags um and there are actually five of them left on the table oh my god we have to get those yeah bags. I, get those bags. Bags. I love gifts. okay so you guys make your way out Mm-hmm. You grab bags. What's in the uh, do you actually like open them right there, or do yes. you like leave? No, I want I to step out and then. Open. Him and I are like off okay. to the side. Like, you step it's... out from the interior yeah. gate, and you well, still have like another hundred yards inside of the Citadel District before you get to the District Gate. So as you're walking, you kind of peek into the bags. You notice first of all that there are a lot of gold coins minted with um, the Kabul Kite, like these are minted from the capital, right? So they're like, they're like, they look like they were made yesterday. Like they're in perfect condition. They're not like grubby, dirty coins that you guys are used to. Um, so they're like beautiful coins. So all of you have a sack with 50 gold coins. Oh, awesome. Nice. But um, additionally, no you notice that there's a leather, uh, inside of the 50. cloth bag is a leather bag which has like a, a soft lining inside of like, you, you estimate like, like sheep, you know, skin. Cause it's, it's lined inside and kind of padded. And inside each of those is a vial with a green liquid inside and a nice handwritten, clearly calligraphied label that says uh, the healing of Vusek. Yeah. So that translates into a healing potion. Um, and that is all that you have in each of your bags. I wanted soap. <laughs> no soap. Um, you guys are then escorted back to the main gate, and they graciously open the gates for you, and you guys leave the Citadel District. And as the gates close behind you, you find yourself once again in the capital city of Poitex Shahar, which is where we are going to end this episode of the Medusas. Thank you, as always, to all of you for your support, for liking, subscribing, clicking on that little notifications bell, and please leave your comments below. Um, be supportive because we love you back. Thanks. Peace out. Bye.